I've built lots of things over the years. And um, I've started doing quite a lot of stuff in service mount over the last few years. Uh, I have my Joe 90 glasses and my uh, tweezers. And it's fine. You can put down 805 resistors. You can put down chips that have got legs that stick out. But a lot of the modern chips don't have legs. They're leadless. And you really can't tackle those with a soldering iron. So I started looking at um, getting a surface mount oven. They are horrifically expensive. And uh, after some trolling around eBay, I found this T962 SMD oven. And I read some reviews, and they went along the lines of complete waste of money. Don't buy this, it's dangerous. Don't buy this, it sets fire to your boards. Uh, but it was really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I found this website, and um, there's some guys in Sweden who've done quite a lot of work on this, and basically it's a little project to convert this into something that works. So I thought, oh, what the hell? And it was at the point where the pound hadn't collapsed, so it was, I got it for quite a good price. It's gone up uh, quite a lot since. So, what the website basically said was, first of all, um, it's unsafe. Now, it's got a C mark on it. And when it arrived, it's got a three pin plug. When it arrived, I did a pat test to prove the earth continuity from the incoming earth pin to the metal. And basically, it was open circuit. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the primary, primary defense against electrocution, which is supposed to be, I think, doesn't work, which is what they basically said on the web. Let me just take the lid off, hang on. So, so it's class two. Well. So basically, they brought a wire, the earth wire from here, and they made it off on a screw here. But that screw was, was screwed into painted metal. So there's no way it was going to make it. Up. So first job was, let's fix the earth thing. So I drilled a hole, made the paint, made that in. I also earthed the bottom, got the pat tester out. Okay, it's safe to turn on now. Second problem that they talked about on the website was that it catches fire and stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Now this turns out that, you see all this yellow stuff, this yellow stuff is captain tape. Previous to the captain tape, it just had standard um, masking tape. Oh, <laughs> it's incredible that you could sell this with a C mark. Just had masking tape holding this down. So eventually, bearing in mind this gets up to 300 degrees centigrade, uh, the masking tape just either catches fire or disintegrates and stinks the place out. So you strip all that off, you, you buy some captain tape, I've put extra on and you put it back together. So that's, that's got it to the point where basically it doesn't set fire to itself and it's safe. Now it's quite, and then you use it and it's quite nice because there's a little display on it and it's got a graph and you can set up different profiles for SMD and you set it off. Unfortunately, it doesn't keep track of the profile. It goes all over the place and burns your board. So you take your board out and your board's brown. Now this turns out the Swedish guys, whose name I've written down here, who put this stuff on <coughs> Unified Engineering Sweden. What they discovered was is that the, although there's two thermocouples in here, there's no cold reference junction for the thermocouples. And that's a bit technical, but what that means is if you don't know what the cold end of your thermocouple is, e.g. the bit that you plug into your processor, there's no way you know what the hot end is. And they basically say it's going to be 25 degrees C. Well, it ain't, because when this gets running, the board's up at 40. So what the Unified Engineering guys did in Sweden is they put a cold junction in, and they did that by putting a thing called a DS1820, 18B20, which is a little Dallas, looks like a transistor, and it measures temperature. And it's, it's mounted here. And they used that to provide the cold junction, and then they wrote firmware, which is available. It's all on open source on SourceForge. So I did the mod, put the... Um, Dallas chip on, blew the firmware. To blow the firmware, you've got to get a cable out um, here. So I, I put a cable out that comes out here. And I got off uh, eBay for about five quid a suitable blowing device, which I then put in a nice box because otherwise it gets shunted out. You plug that in. You run the, the software runs under NXP uh, Expresso, and you it's just small enough to get the free license. So you've got full source. You've got a, a nice development system, and you use a flash programmer whose name I can't remember, but it was also free. Blew the firmware in, up it came, looked good. 
did some tests, it was a hell of a lot better, but the thermocouples still weren't that good because this cold junction, although it's much better than having no cold junction, isn't actually quite in the right place. So I scratched my head about this for a bit, and then I was looking at eBay. Now, to do thermocouple cold junctions 20 years ago was quite an expensive job, but because semiconductors have come along, and even 10 years ago, I can remember I did some on the job and I was paying 10 or 12 quid a chip. On eBay, you can pick these up. This is an AD8495, I think it is, with a printed circuit board and connectors. I think they were less than three pounds each. And it's a full thermocouple with cold junction. So basically, you put a thermocouple in one side and you get five millivolts per degree out the other side. So I thought, well, let's put those on. So I've added two here. And then I stripped out or, well, stripped out. I took two resistors off, which isolated the existing thermocouple circuitry from the processor and fed it into the processor. Then I had to go to the code and I had to hack the code around because obviously what I'm getting out of my thermocouple is slightly different. Uh, and hey presto, bingo. Ran that up, did some tests, put my thermocouples into a hot kettle and boiled it. And yes, it read 100 degrees centigrade on both, so looks like my thermocouples are good. Reassembled all this, ran it up, and it is a hell of a lot better. It's a hell of a lot better, and it looks like it's going to work. And this here is the very first and only ball that I've done to date. <laughs> now, testing is interesting, because you need a lot of boards. Obviously, because something's going to go wrong. So I had a look around the eBay, and on eBay, you can buy these for one pound each. But these are test boards to practice your surface mount on. You get a little board, you get 50 resistors, a 14-pin SOT and a 16-pin um, uh, SMD IC and a couple of transistors, and it's just perfect for practicing with a soldering arm, but it's also very good for practicing here. So I loaded the board up, you put it in the tray here, you set the profile up on the um, display. I used a pre um, a pre-installed profile, but you can actually program your own profiles. And what the profile does is take it up from north, well, from 25 degrees C up to where you're going to solder it, 260, 280, wherever it holds it temporarily up there and then brings it down slowly because you don't want to have thermal shock. And it kind of works. It didn't burn the board. The stuff soldered on. Uh, I don't think the solder paste I'm using is particularly brilliant, but um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So that's where I am. Any questions? Yeah, I've not done much work with solder paste, and I need to find out to somebody who has, but I'm using a syringe, and it's, it's awful stuff to put down, um, and it's awful to clean when it comes down. I mean, if you're going to make lots of these, you'd have a proper solder mask, and you'd screen it like a silk screen, but if you're only making one or two, there's no way you can do that, so that's something I've got to learn to do better than I'm doing at the moment. Have you tried the chips that have got all the pads underneath the package, including one in the centre for heat, heat not, sinking? Not yet, but that's that, going to be the next test, test because um, that was my driving force. A lot of chips now are leadless, and you can't do them with a soldering iron, and a lot of them have heat pads on the underside. But I can't run before I can walk, and at the moment I'm barely walking. So once I know how to get this solder paste to work better, and I'm pretty pleased with this. I mean, this board would work if it was a board. I, I look at it under a microscope, and I think, well, some of those joints aren't quite as nice as I'd like, but that will be my next is it step. Is unleaded or unleaded? Uh, this is unleaded, which makes it tougher. Yeah, much harder. But for, for an amateur, you could use, you know, as an amateur, I could use leaded. Um, but I, I bought some unleaded. I'll probably buy some leaded next time. Any other questions? Jim. Is your next project going to be ultrasonic cleaning, Bart? <laughs> I, I'm cleaning it with um, an aerosol flux with a stiff brush. The stiff brush is critical, and, and then I stick it under the tap. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, but you're right, ultrasonic kind of cleaning bar. And you, what was the stuff we used to put in the ultrasound that's banned? Because that was really good. Trike. Yeah, trike was brilliant. Yeah. It's been banned now. <laughs> Very good for doing carburetors. Yes. But, but as I found out to my cost, when the production manager on the production line finds out that you put your carburetor in his PCB trike, <laughs> he's not a happy bunny for some reason. <laughs> well, 
Yes, well, apparently it doesn't do the boards any good. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite go to a written warning, but... <laughs> Anything else? Okay, thank you. How much did the unit cost to start off with, Jim? Um, if you bought this four months ago, these were just over a hundred, but since the pounds died, uh, they've been creeping up. But shop around, because um, some of the more disreputable suppliers are cheaper than others. <laughs> but don't turn it on to you made to safety. <laughs> That's absolutely lethal. Brilliant, Jim. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you for that. And, uh, yeah, we're expecting many more PCBs. <laughs> <laughs>